just on that high point, you want to carry that sheen just in there. That's all, the only okay. place you want to like give a kind of... And on the nose too a little bit? Uh, yeah, right on the bone of the nose. You see how bright it is? Yeah. It's not, it's not off that ridge. Even if I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That must be part of the fun, though. Yeah, well, it makes you it makes a nervous wreck out of you. <laughs> Apart from making a nervous wreck, what do you like about it? What? What do you enjoy about it? Apart from I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just something I've always I've never done. I've always wondered if I had any creative talent at all. So now I'm finding out. Like at the very end, you know. Mm. What, what do you enjoy about the sculpting? Um, having a chance to be creative and work with my hands and find it relaxing. Well, I'm in the family D. Have you measured? Mm. Yeah, I did. But Have I you gone through the face yet? Yeah? I don't think so. Well, let's look at it. Where does your passion for this come from? Um, I know it's a challenge. It's a spiritual challenge to keep ahead of the damn clay. <laughs> keep your damn mind out of it, you know? Hmm. Your mind out of it? What do you mean? As long as your brain is in there, you're going to fuck it up one way or another. Ah. Use your brain. You know, that's why I try to work as fast as I can work. Uh -huh. Just to not stay ahead of my mind, you know. Because your mind wants to fix it, correct it. Well, is it correct? Is it right? Mm -hmm. But I need the clay to talk to me. I need the clay to tell me what it wants. So it comes up through my hands, not through my, my mind to there. It comes from the hands up. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can that's see. The, that's the challenge. You can see just from the way that you're sitting, you're almost wrapped around. Yeah, well, your it becomes, work also here. becomes uh, a relationship between me and him. He's telling me what to do. You know, I, I, I feel in, in, intimate with him. That's, I'm creating him and he's creating me <laughs> simultaneously, you know. Yeah. And that's the way, isn't that what's going on in actuality? Yeah, that's true. And so I'm trying to breathe, you know, just breathe as much as I can and um, kind of breathe with, with this and let it emerge, let, it, let you know, this relationship between creation and creator, which in the end we're one and the same. All I can do is to get my mind out of it, work fast, and stop judging myself as best I can. It's not necessarily easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Do you like seeing things? That's I like I like trying to see what's what's there and see if we can make the make it look like what's there, rather than seeing a nose, but see shapes and see the shadows too from the lighting on it. See if you can kind of make it look like that. It's just uh, exciting. We started off with a model, a different model, for the first two weeks. And so then we had to reshift the whole thing after the first two weeks to hold a different, a different person, a different personality. Wow. It was fun to get to see if you can capture the personality. Too. Huh. Working on it. Anyway, thank you for coming to this. Oh, it's fun. done a really good job getting the forehead in the right to make it. doesn't do a square thing like this. It continues around like this. What do you en enjoy about sculpting? <laughs> it just, it's like time is standing still. You can just totally get immersed in it and not think about anything but what you're doing. You don't even think about what you're doing. You're just you look across the outside looking. head, you can so see I like this. It's just kind of and you can see this and this has become a little bit just relaxing.
What inspires you about teaching? I, mean, I know you love to sculpt. Well, you know, there's, uh, it's just exciting, you know, to be around people that are f focused and uh, observing, you know, and, and uh, enthralled with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that enthrallment that you can't, you just don't find it in everyday life. You know, it's, it's, being in your passion, you know, and being able to be uh, a part of it, and I get to be my person here, you know, in, in the in the bigger world, um, it can be a little bit too much for people, you know. <laughs> but in this uh, situation, it's perfect. The more I am, you know, pushing outward with my uh, energy and yeah. sharing my energy, it's it's they just gobble it up, you know. It's like. Oh, you know, everybody's yeah. just like... Almost it's like a performer in a way. Yeah, definitely I feel like that. It's one of the few places where when I come to class, about an hour before class, I get psyched. I psych myself and I say, I've got to be up. This is where it really happens is within a class situation. Um, this is where I need all of my energy and all of my focus. And so I spend about an hour, um, I step out of my normal life, I disappear and I, I prepare myself to be here so that I can... You have a normal life? Oh, well, I have sort of a, a day job. <laughs> and I'm not normal in that day job. <laughs> the, the people I work for are really understanding and mm -hmm. everything, and they give me a lot of flexibility. You know, so. And it's probably similar when you're sculpting yourself. You, yeah. know, you find that total immersion? Or yeah. What yeah. is it that... Well, there's great, nothing yeah. else around. You know, I, I'm in a... Um, a very fortunate situation in that I have a studio space where I can put myself between a huge like container and a, an embankment so I'm completely buried in a way in mm -hmm. my work so there's no interference outside interference and uh, of course I make a whole lot of noise because I'm a carver and um, and I'm wearing you know it's just I, I completely immersed in it hmm. and I do that on Thursday morning that's what I do before I come here oh. I, to, I when I got the job that I've had for five years I sit when I went in for the interview and everything it told him all of you know my what I expected and what I wanted from the job and what I couldn't do I said I need long vacations and I have to have one day a week off during the week Oh, I don't know. We'll have to discuss that. They called me back in 20 minutes and said, "Yeah, yeah, we want you to work there, <laughs> right here." You know, so it was a, an, an interesting interview. Mm. Yeah, and and of course the uh, the things that I said in that interview, they come back and tell me, you know, five years later, <laughs> you, you were the wildest interview we've ever had. We had to have you, you know. Uh, so it's been really a good thing for me to be honest. It's a credit to your employers, I think. Yeah, they're South yeah. African. They're not oh. normal either. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're really great people. Very out there. Yeah, yeah. Demonstrative. Bold. Yeah. Very bold, very um, uh, creative people, too. Huh. So it's a good thing for me. It's a good match. I was struck with when you said that you're almost buried there in your work location. I mean, it seems such a metaphor for someone. Like here you're working with clay out of the earth and stone and mm -hmm. iron yeah. and other things out of the earth. Elements. And, and what I'm working on right now in my own work is uh, I'm making a series called Plant It. And what I'm making are large lima beans out of green marble. And uh, they are, you know, it's, it's, it, I've always done ecologically sensitive art or focused art and um, I, I've just reached the point where I've been having my own little uh, garden in my patio you know for a few years and I hadn't had a garden since I was in college and I didn't realize how much it meant to me you know mm. and in that process it just inspired me to start making lima beans because they have such a, fo a life force it's like Jack and the Beanstalk kind of thing mm. and um, I grew beans uh, a a year and a half ago, I drew, I grew these beans that had these great big red and white speckles on them, 
and uh, they captured my imagination. That's my creative process, kind of. I go to one time I went to Alaska, and about a year and a half later, I was making these big marble glaciers with drill marks with oil, you know, rubber oh. coming out of them to to have that kind of because I experienced it. I saw what was going on, and it takes about a year and a half for whatever inspires me to sort of. Uh, go through my psyche and come out in my work, you know. Mm. So I'm making lima beads. <laughs> <laughs> May they prosper and reach the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're growing. <laughs> the first one didn't have anything growing out of it. This one does. This one has a, really? a sprout. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the next one will have something else. <laughs> okay. But, you know, when you're in a scale of a lima bean about this size and it's marble, you know, that has... Uh, it, it takes it into an icon, you know, or uh, a bigger, re you know, energy. It's a life force. You know, mm -hmm. I try to, not all of my work has a life force in it, you know. There's some successes and, and a lot of failures and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sculpture of mine in the BFI dumpster. That kind of thing. <laughs> because, you know, it's really, I don't need to make more objects to fill up the world. I try to create things that that really uh, <laughs> add to the life energy, you know, add to the life force mm. and this stuff. So every once in a while I hit it. This one, I don't know if it's going to hit it. You know, I'm, I'm still wi hoping and, and focused and, and pushing th that towards that life force mm. kind of energy. But right now I'm sort of 50-50 on it. I don't know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen until it's done. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm so it's glad good. I got to ask these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a great interview. <laughs> you are. I do a great moment. But, you know, this has been amazing. This semester has been just amazing. Misha, you know, just brought it all together for me, you know, as far as energy. And she, she really uh, added something that I've never had a model add to a class before. Oh. You know, it's just been great. She's very much inspired them. And you can see that in the work, that yeah. there's a piece of each artist in these heads, but there's a lot of her. It's almost like a, a blending of two person people you know, mm -hmm. in one mm -hmm. sculpture. Yeah, and that's a, I see that. That's a marriage, you know, that's a, that's a, a, a birthing of a, of a different being, you know, when you see how that happens, you mm -hmm. know, they take from her and they give. It's mm -hmm. a back and forth take yeah. and give. So I've been blown away by this one. This has been great. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And everybody's different. And all of them are very strong. And some people have struggled a little bit or taken their time to explode. And like this week, I walked around and like, oh, every one of them has just come to life. Yeah, I think I'll take a quick look around. That's good. So my meditation for the class, for, although I've meditated on many things, has mostly been peace in my spirit, in my soul, in my mind, in my body, and for the planet, and inspiration in and inspiration out for the artists. So even if the current is open, it's open because the ball 